Greetings, friends around the world. This is Bible News Prophecy Program. My name is Alexander Sashevedic, and welcome. Uh, this, several days ago, that will be December the 2nd, 2022, the Temple Institute in Jerusalem issued a uh, one of their teachings that they regularly send every week to their uh, correspondence list. They quoted Genesis 28, verse 22, this stone shall be a house of God. And uh, they wrote, that it was Kislev VIII, 5783. That's their reckoning of this year. December 2nd, 2022. And then uh, they say, what, a, what in a dream? What is in a dream a lot according to the Torah? Yaakov's dream of a ladder set up on the ground and its top reached to heaven and behold angels of God were ascending and descending upon it and behold Hashem was standing over it Genesis 28 verse 12 to 13 was the first of a series of dreams that changed the course of history not only for the children of Abraham, Yitzhak and Yaakov but for all of humanity Yaakov's dream and those of Joseph of Pharaoh's baker and cup bearer and the twin dreams of Pharaoh himself all shaped the narrative of the concluding chapters of Genesis, placing Yosef in Egypt as slave, prisoner, and viceroy to Pharaoh, setting the stage for the descent of Joseph's brothers and his father Yaakov into Egypt and their children's descent into slavery, just as God had foretold Abraham also in a nighttime vision. Yaakov woke up from his dream in terror. He stood and not only remembered his dream in its entirety, he drew conclusions from his dream. He sanctified his dream, placing the stone upon which he had laid his head as a monument, anointing it with oil. And Yaakov took his dream one step further. He vowed to make in his dream of a ladder reaching from earth to heaven a reality, building upon the holy temple. Yaakov uttered a vow, saying, If God will be with me, and he will guard me on this way, upon which I am going, and he will give me bread to eat and garment to wear, and if I return in peace to my father's house, and Hashem will be my God, then this stone which I have placed as a monument shall be a house of God, and everything that you give me I will surely tithe to. This is uh, again from Genesis chapter 28, verse 20, 21, and 22. Well, friends, what shall we make out of all of this? Uh, the uh, Temple Foundation also added 2,000 years ago, the Holy Temple, the fulfillment of Yaakov's dream and his vow, was destroyed, and for 2,000 years Yaakov's descendants were in the deep sleep of exile, and then in June 1976 Yaakov's children woke up in the very spot that Yaakov has laid his head, the Temple Mount, the place of the very Holy Temple that Yaakov vowed to Hashem to build. The foundation stone of the Holy Temple, the stone Yaakov slept upon and dreamed upon, the stone he stood up and anointed, remains in the very place he left it. It is incumbent upon us, Yaakov's children, to fulfill Yaakov's pledge to Hashem, to build a house for God, a holy temple, and to make God's dream come true. Well, friends, again, what shall we make out of all of this? Well, as far as dreams go, God still uses them, but most people will not accept how God really works. And uh, dreams that people in the last days will have dreams that will be fulfilled, you can find in Acts chapter 2, verse 17 and 18. As far as God's temple goes since Jesus' resurrection, this is not something that the Jews can build. In this era, the collective of the true Christian church is the temple of God. Now let me point out that the Temple Institute believes that it must clear the Temple of Mount of Islamic structure in order to build its, build its temple. Now of course the Muslims are not interested in getting their famous Dome of the Rock and their mosque removed from that place. And so it is not likely even after war, and that is part of why uh, we should understand that the Jews would be willing to resume animal sacrifices without the rebuilding of a full Jewish temple, and it is consistent with the Bible, like Ezra 3 and uh, uh, verse 6, At, in Ezra's time there was still not temple, and yet the Jew Jewish people resumed sacrifices upon the return from the exile in Babylon after 70 years. That's also the position of certain that the Jews could, you know, resume animal sacrifice without the rebuilding a full Jewish temple is also a position of certain Jewish leaders, such as those in the reconstituted Sanhedrin, and even some at the Temple Institute. However, they've got another teaching that uh, perhaps uh, would reveal to us and give us more understanding of 
what they are all about. It says, our sages teach that the stone under the dome of the rock is called the foundation stone, for it is the very foundation of creation. It is the spiritual center of the world and the starting point of creation. All the prayers of all mankind assemble in this place before ascending on high to God. It was here that the Ark of the Covenant was placed within the Holy of Holies. And then, here is another excerpt from their teaching. The Temple Mount, where God chose to place His name, is literally the point of creation, the place where the physical realm come, came into existence. And it is the place where everything we can't see, i.e. the spiritual world, attaches itself to the physical. It is literally the portal between heaven and the earth. This precise point creation of creation on the Temple Mount is called the even Shetiach, the foundation stone. Uh, anyway, that's another of their teaching. Now, Jacob, uh, the son of Isaac, the grandson of Abraham, also saw a vision of that prime evil point of creation that links heaven and earth. His vision is famously known as Jacob's Ladder, and it is recorded in Genesis chapter 28 that we uh, just uh, read a few minutes ago. Now, uh, we have uh, some more in these teachings. He said, Jacob departed from Barsheba and went toward Haran. He encountered the place and spent the night. He took from the stones of the place which he arranged around his head and lay down in that place, and he dreamt. And behold, a ladder was set e earthward, and its top reached heavenward, and behold, angels of God were ascending and descending on it. Jacob awoke from his sleep and said, Surely Hashem is present in his in this place, and I did not know. And he became frightened and said, How awesome is this place! This is none other than the abode of God, and this is the gate of the heavens. Jacob arose early in the morning and took the stone that he placed around his head and set it up as a pillar and poured oil on its top and said, Set this stone which I have set up as a pillar shall become a house of God. Friends, did you catch that? Even prior to the temple standing, Jacob called the temple mount the abode of God and the uh, gate of the heavens. Yet, at the time, uh, when an apt name the place, as if it is only the only place of real significance in the world, Jacob slept at the precise location of the future altar of the Holy Temple. So no wonder it was the place where Adam, Cain, Abel, and Noah made sacrifices, continues to tell us the uh, Temple Institute. Uh, and according to Pirke de Rabbi Eliezer 31, and it was the place where Abraham bound Isaac to the altar. In fact, the twelve stones Jacob gathered around his head before he slept came from the altar Abraham made and bound Isaac upon. Well, they're placed on the foundation stone, the even Shtia of the Temple Mount on the, of the Holy of Holies. We Jews know, they continue, that upon it Yitzhak was bound. It was purchased by David from Aravna and over it Solomon built the first temple. Those are the teachings, dear friends, of the Temple Institute. So claiming that this comes from the Bible as well as the Jewish tradition, the Temple Institute claims that the stone of Jacob, that Jacob used as a pillar, was the foundation for the creation of the world. Because of that, the Muslim structure must be removed from the Temple Mount area so a Jewish temple can't be built there. Now, of course, uh, that's not going to happen because here is what the Bible records about Jacob, the stone and related dream. And you can read it all in um, Genesis 28, verse 10 through 22. And there you'll find that while the stone may well have been part of the first temple that Solomon built, the Bible does not seem to place the creation importance on that this particular stone itself that the Temple Institute places on it. It simply does not teach that this same stone was used by Adam, Cain, Abel and Noah. Jesus warned that the Jews sometimes relied on their own traditions about the Bible. He warns that in the Gospel of Mark chapter 7 verse 9 through 13 he also warned that this is what the temple well this is what the temple institute seems to be doing in some instances and that being said the temple institute is preparing to perform animal sacrifices and has given statements showing that it is willing to do them without a new temple being built 
Only an altar and some implements with a Levite are biblically required per scripture, and the Temple Institute has basically claimed to have all of that. The Bible teaches that animal sacrifices will stop in Daniel 9 verse 27 and Daniel 11 verse 31, which means that they first must start. And irrespective of Jewish traditions about the foundation stone or foundational stone, the Temple Institute and others have indicated a willingness to start the sacrifices when allowed. And that may well happen after some type of peace deal is confirmed in the Middle East, prophesied in Daniel 9.27. The Temple Institute will not insist on the Dome of the Rock, etc., to be removed before implementing some type of daily sacrifice. Now, getting back to the stone itself, there are the legends, traditions as well. Uh, some are Jewish, some are non-Jewish, and uh, they believe that David purchased it based upon the following account from the Bible that is in... Um, let me see, that's in Second Samuel chapter 24, verses 18 through 25. And in verse 24, then the king said to Aruna, No, but I'll surely buy it from you for a price. Nor will I offer burnt offerings to the Lord my God with that which costs me nothing. So David bought the threshing floor and the oxen for 50 shekels of silver. And David built me there an altar to the Lord and offered burnt offerings and peace offerings to the Lord. He did the prayers for the land and the plague was withdrawn from Israel. So you see, while the Temple Institute seems to believe that the stone is below ground in the Temple Mount areas, others have other views. They have views that uh, the Stone of Scone, more commonly known as the Stone of Destiny or the Coronation Stone, though the former name sometimes refers to Leah File. It's a block of sandstone historically kept at the now-ruined Abbe in Scone near Perth. It's also known as Jacob's Pillow Stone or Jacob's Pillar Stone and as the Tannist Stone. Traditionally, it's supposed to be the stone which Jacob used as a pillow. It was originally supposed to have been used as the coronation stone of the early Dalriada Scots when they lived in Ireland. In 1996, the British government decided that the stone should be kept in Scotland where, when not in use at coronations. And on November 15, 1996, after a handover ceremony at the border between representatives of the Home Office and the Scottish Office, it was returned to Scotland and transported to Edinburgh Castle where it remains. Now we have seen a late work on prophecy, gravely affirming that the prophet Jeremiah died in Ireland, having been forced hither by the wandering sons of Ephraim. And one of the few unquestionable facts connects with early, uh, connected with early Irish history is the intercourse between Ireland and the Phoenicians through Spain. The Israelite settlers, according to the tradition, carried with them Jacob's pillow or pillar known as the Leophile or Stone of Destiny, which secured a perpetual monarchy to the people so happy as to possess it. This stone, at the crowning of the first king of Scots, of the Scots in Scotland, was borrowed. And uh, yes, that stone, uh, again, uh, exists today. It's there in Scotland. Historically, Various people that had leaders in the old Worldwide Church of God have tended to believe that Jacob's stone is the stone of destiny that is currently in Scotland, but there is controversy. Some believe the real stone is lost or hidden, and the replacement is what is now in Scotland. I personally don't believe that. Now, other stones that may have had biblical usage may, however, very well have been part of the first or second temples in Jerusalem. You need to keep that in mind, friends. And in any case, uh, since the Bible teaches that animal sacrifices will stop, they must first resume. And currently, because of the majority Jewish view, this most likely is in the Temple Mount area, though there are other possible locations. And this resumption of animal sacrifices is something that the Temple Institute may well be involved in, and they mainly only need permission from Israeli authorities to do so. And getting that permission is not impossible, though it may well take a war, peace deal, and or political gridlock for that to happen. But it will come to pass, because the Bible teaches, it's the word of God, and as you know, God never lies. Thank you for your attention, friends, for more information about in-depth 
analysis of world events in trend, trends, please visit our www.bibleprophecynews.net. Until next time, goodbye friends.